Let us consider that scene in the Gospel in which our Lord cures the man with the withered hand in the synagogue. The passage is taken from the third chapter of St Mark, verses 1 to 6. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath? rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it. But they remained silent, looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart. Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. As I said, that passage is from the third chapter of St Mark, verses 1 to 6. Well, what thoughts does that passage give rise to in our minds? Our Gospel passage today places us in the midst of a perennial human mystery. That mystery is the power of sin in the face of the Creator God. Our Lord enters the synagogue and there in the synagogue was a man with a ruined, withered hand. That hand of his was in a helpless condition. It was beyond curing. In the face of this, this need, there was little doubt as to what the, the holy and compassionate Jesus would do. But there in the synagogue also were his silent, inexorable enemies, the Pharisees, who were determined to seize on something of substance to accuse him. That issue was his violation of the observance of the Sabbath as they had interpreted and taught it. In view of their passionate hostility, we must presume that they saw in our Lord one who flouted their privileged position in the religious state and who was, in the process of his ministry and teaching, undermining their self-appointed authority and their general ascendancy. Their religious authority was maintained by, among other things, their sway in determining the religious behaviour of, of the nation, even to the point of absurdities. In all he did and said, Jesus showed himself to be his own supreme authority in interpreting God's law and of this they were profoundly jealous. This produced hatred, and at our Lord's Passion, Pilate himself could see this. Our Lord always knew what was in the hearts of men, and having entered the synagogue, he called the crippled man to come forward in front of everyone. Then he issued his challenge to the Pharisees. They did not dare to enter into debate with Christ, but remained ruthlessly and stubbornly silent, refusing to allow themselves to be shown up as false. Christ's spectacular and effortless miracle, curing the man with the withered hand, changed nothing. Their hatred became murderous. The terrible wonder is, here, how profoundly the freedom that comes forth from the hand of God and implanted 
in the heart of man can turn absolutely against him. The freedom which God gives to man and which involves his intelligence and his conscience makes man like unto God. As the first chapter of the book of Genesis makes clear, God is more, man rather, is more like God than, say, the animals. God made him in his own image. He is free. He can choose to be like unto God, or he can choose to be his own independent God. Furthermore, man can deceive himself in this very process and embrace a blindness that thinks he is good in doing evil. The Pharisees opposed Christ despite the plainest evidence of his holiness and his authority before God and they hated him implacably. This was the past to which they had come so quickly. It is a great lesson to each of us because we too have been given the same precious freedom and we too suffer from the same original sin. Just as they did, so too do we stand before Christ with the choice before us of accepting him or not. St Ignatius Loyola in his spiritual exercises has a famous meditation called the two standards. Christ is pictured in that meditation with his standard and Satan is pictured with his. The way of Christ which is that of the cross is diametrically opposed to the way of Satan which is that of his own wiles in tandem with the flesh and the world. So let us imagine ourselves in the synagogue of our gospel scene today and the two camps facing each other. There is on the one hand the all-holy, all-powerful and humble Christ and on the other hand there is the sullen group of the Pharisees blindly doing the work of Satan. Let us choose Christ and remain with him as he follows the path of obedient suffering that leads to Calvary. Jesus Christ is the person of the ages. He is beyond compare. He is the perfect man and he is God. He did the world's greatest work which was to break the power of sin, to redeem us from sin and implant in the world and in us the kingdom of his grace. We are members of that kingdom by baptism and so he lives in us and we in him. Let us renounce anything in us that links us to the Pharisees of our scene today and place ourselves close to Jesus and resolve to live in truth as his disciples.